Praise the name of the Lord. It's good to know that what, what God says in his word is real. It's a promise, and that promise is yea and amen. You know, uh, God said uh, yea, but he didn't say nay. Amen. And so uh, when we take the word of God at promise, we know that God's the one that's going to answer that promise. We thank the Lord for that. Uh, there was a uh, little thought that I cut out of a, a paper a few years ago. It's called The Window into the Word. Uh, was the name of the article. It said, you, you've got work to do. Now, every one of us got a job that we need to be doing for the Lord, and, and uh, no one can do our job for us. It's our job to do it. We just need to get it done, don't we? Be faithful at it. Serve the Lord in everything that we do. Anyway, uh, the story went on this way. It said that after Jim and his wife, Barbara, got up one Sunday morning, uh, Barbara got dressed for church. And it was almost time to leave when she noticed that uh, Jim hadn't gotten dressed yet. Uh, perplexed, she asked him, why? Jim said, because I don't want to go to church. Well, that's pretty honest. Uh, I imagine there's a lot of people that feels that way. Sometimes I feel that way. Amen. But uh, we get up and go anyway because we know that God expects us to be there, right? Right. Anyway, so Jim said to his wife, I don't want to go to church. And Barbara exclaimed, why not? Jim said, because I have three good reasons. He said, number one, he said, the congregation is cold. Number two, he said, no one likes me. And number three, he said, I just don't want to go. Uh -huh. So his wife, Barbara, replied to him, said, well, Jim, I have three reasons why you should go. First of all, the congregation is warm. And secondly, there are a few people who do like you. Uh -huh. And thirdly, you're the pastor, uh -huh. so get dressed. Uh -huh. <laughs> Sometimes we need instruction, men. Yeah from our wives when they give us good godly counsel. Right, man. And, uh, and, and uh, this Barbara gave to her husband some good godly counsel. <laughs> Get dressed, uh, it's time for church, let's go. <laughs> I noticed that in, in, my, in my age, I, how do I say that? <laughs> my wife and I were gonna be married uh, 40 years this coming uh, October uh -huh, uh, the man. 27th. And, oh, yeah. and I'm, learned that over the years she has been an influence in my life that has influenced me to serve the Lord. Uh -huh. I was reading this past week in the book of First Kings and, uh, and uh, well matter of fact I'm reading through the Kings and through the, uh, the book of First and Second Samuel, First and Second Kings and, and uh, in the process Solomon was a man Amen. Who loved the Bible said many wives. Uh -huh. So his wives then, in turn, that he owned, uh, that he that he married, his seven hundred wives and princesses, and then three hundred concubines. He had he had a lot of wives, and but in the process, they turned his heart away from God, and they caused him to serve idols, right. and to the point where uh, he loved them so much that he put God on a second shelf and he, and he served God's, that his wives from other countries and from other nationalities, amen, served. Right. I can say of the truth that my wife has given me counsel many times over again and the counsel that she gives me is, is given to me in wisdom. Uh -huh. Given to me from the scripture. Right. She's never had to tell me to go to church. Uh -huh. She never had to remind me that I was the pastor, uh -huh. but I thank God for the counsel that she has given to me, right. and she hasn't tried to me to get me to go to a high place and set up an idol uh, to some other God right. that she could worship or that I might fall in love with someday. Right. But instead, she has held true to the Word of God and held true to the Bible and has presented a godliness uh, to me Amen. In my old age, that instead of falling away from God like Solomon did, uh -huh. amen, it has drawn us closer to God, yes. and I thank the Lord for that. Amen. There was an old fellow that went to our church years ago, and when he would come in, I remember him come. I remember him as a younger man, amen, uh, smoking a pipe and playing pool. Uh -huh. But as he got older, I remember him coming to church with his wife. And then he would praise the Lord and thank God for his salvation and also thank God for his wife because he said his wife was the influence that brought this man to Christ. 
I tell you what, women, you've got a, a job to do, and that and maybe your husbands are not here today. Amen. Maybe and there, might, uh, you, you know, there might be someone else that you can witness to, but your counsel is one that they will listen to. Amen. So lead them. Amen. Uh, uh, bring them. Amen. To Jesus Christ. Lead them to the cross. Amen. And then God will be with you. God is not a man, amen, that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? God is a God that requires of you and I faith. Amen. Even faith tells us to, them that, uh, to hold on to that thing that we have with our knowledge, right. accepted many years ago, even though today our, uh, our uh, feelings may not be as strong as that they were the day that we accepted right. them. Mm -hmm. Even matter of fact, uh, we might even want to change our mind. Uh -huh. But if God's given us truth, don't change your mind. If God's given you a way of life and to walk in it, walk in it. If God's told you that this is what he wants you to do, then he's not a God that's going to lie to you. Right, really, he's not one that's going to change his mind or his attitude. If he's asked you to do something, do it for his glory. Amen. And continue to do it until he gives you something else to do. Right. Amen. I, Amen. Like, I know God. He won't take away what he's given you. Right. Chances are he'll just give you something else. Yes, because now he knows you're more dedicated yeah. and you've got more time to get it done. Right. I thank God. Amen for the people that has influenced my life and then has given me uh, what I needed in, in order to continue to serve him in the way that he wants me to. God is good to us. Amen. We thank God for his goodness. Amen. Um, in the scripture in Mark's gospel, chapter 11 and verse 22, the Bible tells us very simply to have faith in God. Yeah. A lot of people have faith in a lot of things, but uh, but uh, they but they somehow or another don't want to put their faith in God. But I'm going to put my faith in Him, yeah. and I'm going to put my faith in His Word. His Word said, "God is not a man that He should lie." So, in other words, God's telling me that God is not a liar. Right. That's what the Word of God tells me. Huh. He said, "He's neither the Son of Man that He should repent." Amen, he's not a sinner that he has to repent of something that he has done or some decision that he has made. Amen, he's God. He made the heavens and the earth and all the stars and everything that there was. And he, and he hung them in the sky and he told the oceans to hold it into their borders. And he put things in right and he set them in order. And then, amen, because he's God, he can do that. Yeah. Who am I as a man that I should think that God should repent? Right. No, sir. God is God. He don't have to repent. Have he said, uh, and shall he not do it? Amen. If he's told us something in the word of God, we can hold on to it, and we can believe that God's going to carry it out. Amen. He said, the Bible said, and hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? I'll tell you what, we've got a God that makes it good every time. Amen. Uh, one fellow said simply this way, do not lose heart. Put your faith in God's word. And God will take us through. Do you believe it? Yes. Amen. One fellow said, do not give in to doubt. Amen. We used to sing a song that said, faith, 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 just a little more faith. And then we sang another chorus about doubt, 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 just a little less doubt. Uh -huh. You see, there was a time when God made he uh, heaven and earth and everything that was in it, and he made man, and then he created from a man's rib a woman, and he called her Eve, and they put him in a garden setting, and in this garden he gave them faith, and they walked with and talked with God and had fellowship with God. He told them they didn't have to do uh, anything, that God was going to take care of them, God fed them every day, supplied their needs. He said, there's only one thing you don't do, he said, uh, and don't eat of the tree of, of knowledge of good and evil. The day that you do that, you're going to die. Amen. They had faith, but not doubt. But all of a sudden, uh, they done what they wasn't supposed to do. And doubt entered the picture. Do not give in to doubt today. But let's take God at his promise. Let's take God at his word. Don't give in to doubt and don't give in to fear and don't give in, give in to unbelief and don't give in to discouragement and don't give in to the excuses for us having such unbelief. 
But let's take our faith and apply our faith to God's word and let's hold on to it and in prayer, even immediately, even to uh, rebuke and resist all opposition to, uh, to doubt and to us not getting an answer to our prayer. And let's hold on to our faith. And our faith says, God will answer our prayer. Amen. Scripture said, ask and it shall be given you. He said, you have not because you ask not. Amen. Uh, God wants us to be asking. And again, we read the scripture from uh, Luke's gospel, chapter 18 and verse 1, that said, amen, that we should pray always, that we ought to pray always and not to faint. The word ought didn't mean that we have to, but we ought to. It's your job and my job to exercise our faith. When we exercise our faith, our faith becomes strong, and we become what God wants us to do. Then God's given us promise, even a blood-bought uh, blood right uh, to call on his name and to believe and to receive an answer to our prayer. I found out a long time ago, God doesn't always say yes when I pray. Right. But every time I pray, amen, I exercise my faith, and I know that God hears me, then if God hears me, that gives me enough patience to wait for the answer. Sometimes God says yes, sometimes God says no, sometimes God says wait a while. Amen, in any case, as long as I'm praying to Him, I know that all things will work together for good to them that love God and to them who know that they are called according to His purpose. It's going to work all right out for me because I wait on the Lord. I have exercised the law of harvest, amen, that is believe and receive. Amen, if we exercise and we do exercise our faith, our faith becomes stronger and we become what God wants us to be or who God wants us to be. Amen. I was uh, wrote down a, a few uh, scriptures and I'd like to share some of them with you. Dick Spiegel said that such is possible or it would not uh, be a command. And he's talking about Mark's Gospel, chapter 11, verse 22, where he said, have faith in God. It's possible for us to have faith in God. It's possible for us to talk to God and God hear us when we pray. Romans chapter 10, verse 17 said, so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. Amen. When we study the Word of God, we read the Word of God, we go to church and the preacher preaches the Word of God, Amen. Uh, and the, we hear it, and as we hear it, it builds our faith. And the Bible tells us that without faith it's impossible to please God, and they that come to God must believe that He is, and that He is a rewarder of them that diligently yeah. seek Him. Amen. We exercise our faith when we call upon the name of the Lord, when we uh, are, are become obedient to uh, the gospel of Luke chapter 18 verse 1 that said, men ought always to pray. God tells us that that's our faith being exercised. We need to have that kind of faith. Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20 said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, he said, I live. Uh, and how's that? He said, I'm crucified. That means I, was, I, I died. As Christ was crucified, he died. But nevertheless, he said, I live. Yet not I, but Christ Jesus lives in me. And the life which I now live in the, in the flesh, I live by the faith yeah. of the Son of God. Amen. Uh, who loved me and gave himself for me. Amen. When we live our lives in faith uh, and we are crucified with Christ, uh, but, we're, but we haven't died uh, 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 really, but we've given our lives over to Him, that it's not our will that's going to be done, but it's God's will going to be done. And we're doing that by faith because we believe that God is a God of His Word and that God is not a liar and that God is able to do what He said He would do and that uh, and we can make it and He'll make it good. Even then, uh, simply by faith, we accept the fact that He's a good God and that He keeps His Word. Colossians chapter 1, verse 23 said, Ye, uh, if ye continue in the faith, grounded and settled, uh, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel. In other words, there's hope in the gospel, and we receive that hope by faith. Faith tells us everything's going to be all right. Faith is the substance of things uh, hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Amen. Oh, I hope one day I'm going to get to uh, go to heaven. I believe I will. Amen. Amen. I am, but I've never seen it. Someone said, how do you know you're going to like it when you get there? That's a good question. I guess that's as good as any. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you what, I've been in heavenly places a few times. Uh -huh. I've been in a place where God met with me in the Spirit, uh, and, uh, and His Spirit blessed my heart. 
I sometimes I cried, sometimes I laughed, sometimes I uh, laid it in the floor, sometimes I was on my knees. Amen. I, uh, but wherever the position that my body was in, it didn't matter. My spirit was with the Lord in a heavenly place. Amen. I wasn't in heaven itself, but I liked that heavenly place, and I got along pretty good there. If I can get along pretty good in a heavenly place, I know when I get to heaven, I'm going to like it. Amen. And I know one thing, there'll be a whole lot better than that other place that the Bible talks about. Right. That's right. Someone said it's not uh, right for you to use the word hell and talk about hell in scripture, right. and hell in the Bible, and hell in church, but I'll tell you what, a lot of people's going there. That's right. right. I'm not going there. Amen. Yeah. You can call hell today and tell them that I'm not coming. Yes, amen. amen. Christ has saved me. Yeah. I've been washed in the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. My name's been written down in heaven. Yes. Amen. I've been forgiven. Thank the Lord. Amen. I was lost, but now I'm found. <coughs> amen. I thank God. Amen. By faith. And I receive the precious word of a total gentleman who said, I'm not a liar. Amen. Who said, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Who said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Who said, not by works of righteousness which man hath done, uh, but by the uh, Holy Ghost, amen, uh, changing us, moving us, and, and uh, rearranging us. By faith we receive him. Colossians chapter 2 and verse 6 and 7 the Bible said that as ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, established in the faith as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Amen. I thank you, Jesus, that, that you have changed my life. I thank you that you have changed my direction. You see... If I was to take a board and go from the ceiling of the, of the church on my left all the way to the floor on the ceiling of my, on my right, you would see an inclined plane. And if in that plane there was a groove that was cut in the middle of that plane and I was to take a marble over here on this side and I turn it loose, gravity would carry that marble downhill all the way to the bottom over there. Amen. I was that marble. Yeah. My life was in the world and gravity was carrying me down. Yeah. Yeah, come on. Sin had a hold of my life. And except there would be a power that was greater than mine. Amen. A power that was greater than gravity. A power that was greater than the stream that carries logs down the river. Had stopped me somewhere in the flow and began to bring me back towards heaven. I would never make it there. Right. Yeah. I would end up in that place down there. If heaven was here and hell was there, I was on my way to the hell in a pretty quick hurry yeah. until Jesus changed my yeah. life yeah. by a power that was greater than yeah. mine. Yeah. His grace was sufficient for me. And he brought me up to a place, even where now I can say I'm his and he's mine. Yeah. And, and he's not a God yeah. even that lies, but a God that tells the truth. Hallelujah. Second Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 3 said, We are bound to thank God yeah. always for you, brethren, as it is me, because that your faith groweth exceeding, and the charity of every one of you all towards each other aboundeth. Yeah, that's good. But it's not by ourselves, it's Christ in us the hope of glory. Yeah. But it's faith. We take God at His word. Amen. And when we do, God takes care of us, doesn't he? Right. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 1 through 5. The Bible said, and besides this, given the fifth verse, besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, mm -hmm. and to virtue knowledge. God requires faith of man. We must exercise it. Otherwise, it becomes weak. Amen. We know it must exercise our body, otherwise our bodies become weak. Right. Yeah. And then sometimes we just get old and we get weak. <laughs> <laughs> Seven days without church makes one week. That's, That's right. right. Amen. Amen. We need to be in the house of the Lord. Yes. Right. We need to be in the Bible. We need to be a, a standing in God and a believe in Him because He's the one that takes us through. Amen. I like this. I, I wrote down several thoughts. I had and uh, I'm going to share a couple. All we get from God, we get by faith. 
We've yeah. got to have faith in God. It's impossible to please Him without it. And again, asking is the law of getting. You have not because you ask not. And when you ask, you ask amiss. <coughs> if we meet the condition of what we're asking for, we receive the promise. God is not a man that he should lie. Hath he said and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken and shall he not make it good? I'll tell you what he does, doesn't he? Yes, he does. I've served him now for many years. And I found this to be the truth, that if I wait on the Lord, he'll renew my strength. Even if I walk with him, he'll walk with me. Amen. If I draw nigh to God, God will draw nigh to me. Amen. That's what he said. I guess the truth would come right down to the point where we're as close to God as we want to be. That's it. Amen. How close are we? Man, I'll tell you what, we need him, don't we? Right. Thank you, Lord. He saw their faith. Yes. Hallelujah. What a wonderful God he is. I'm going to quit. Have faith in God.